and I'll quietly climb, eat my food and come back. So from that day, we see geckos on all our walls where, and they're very, very quiet creatures and uh, they can climb, they can stay upside down anywhere and, uh, and the only guy, he still sometimes when he has a good meal, he ends up making a noise saying There was a very big jungle with lots of trees. And all the trees were very happy. You want to know why? There were lots of birds building their nest on the trees and laying eggs. And small, small birds coming out. <laughs> Not only that, in the shadow of the tree, there are lots of animals having conferences and parties. Could you tell me what, which all animals could be there? Which animal could be there in the jungle? He was sad, you know, why? Do you want to know why? Because no birds build, his, build their nest on him. There was not a single bird who would come and sit on him. Nor any animals who would come and stand under his shade and discuss or have a party. And he was feeling very lonely and left out. And do you know why this happened? Because there was a big snake living on that tree who had a very loud voice. His voice was so loud that all the animals and birds got very scared and ran away from him. That is why nobody came near that tree. But the snake, he was a very friendly snake. He used to go to all the trees and say, Can you be my friend? Can you be my friend? Can you be my friend? But as soon as he opens his mouth, all the animals got scared and ran away. Now one day, from a very long way places, a nightingale came flying and sat on this tree. And one more thing the snake did. He was so unhappy that he never went out to shed his skin. He shed his skin on the tree. And there were a lot of skin hanging from the tree. Which made the tree look very ugly. But when the nightingale came, he sat on this tree. And he sang a beautiful song. Hearing this, the snake was very happy. Oh, somebody has come to my house. And he comes out. And the tree also becomes gets very happy. Oh my, some bird has come to my tree. And he shakes and he dances to the nightingale's tune. And the snake comes out and he asks, Oh, nightingale? Are you a nightingale? I have heard about you. Yeah, I am. But who are you? Sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but who are you? You don't know me. I am the snake. But why are you so lonely over here? And I, the snake says, oh, that's a big story. Nobody wants to make friend with me. And nobody wants to play with me. But why? That's because they say I have got a very loud voice. Oh, the snake says, but you sing so beautifully. Can you teach me how to sing like you, please? The nightingale looks up on the tree and says, You say this is your house. Yes. But I, I feel that you have to keep your house a little more tidy for the birds to come. Why don't we start cleaning it up? So both of them work together to clean the house and they take out the skin and throw it out and the house becomes very neat and tidy. The snake comes back again. 
You promise me to teach me how to sing. Will you do that now? Of course I will. Now you must sing and say as I sing. Okay, I'll try. So the nightingale goes. Let me try. Louder. And that is how the snake got his hissing sound. <laughs> Hearing the snake hiss so softly, all the other birds come out, out of their nest and the animals come and say, Oh my God, what happened to the snake? And all of them become friends and have a nice party together. <laughs> That's better. Is a squirrel. So I'll do a mime piece. Uh, and this is a nut. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I'm Judy the Woodpecker 
And uh, this is a very special tree. I've come out of this tree hole today, which is my home, just to tell you the story, which is very special to me. Uh, why is this story so special to me? The story is special to me because it's about the village I love the most. And what do you think is so very special about this village? It's a village where everybody is so happy. Nowadays, so many places that you go and see, okay, even if you go to a bus stop, you see somebody with a long drawn face thinking about something, right? But here is a village where everybody is happy. They're celebrating life all the time. And this village is full of greenery, lovely trees, the water's gurgling, the bells are full, the river is gushing. Yeah? And the little boys and girls and everybody is playing around me, around this tree. And uh, this tree is so very special because it's right in the middle of the village. If you've noticed, when you go to little villages, there's always this very big tree which makes the center of the village and that's where people all gather together. Now this tree is also like that. It's right in the middle of the village and this is where all the old people sit and twiddle their ears. Yeah? Everything that they get time for. They gossip about the village, the day, the weather, the seasons and everything. The best of all these girls and boys are jumping over the tree, climbing down, playing games. And it's so cheery, this whole place. It's this bursting with laughter and fun. And one day what happened? There was a big famine that struck this village. The rain stopped, the wells went dry, everybody's throat went dry with thirst. The children were sad, everybody was hungry, the animals were hungry and tired. The whole place went dry. The river stopped flowing and slowly the laughter stopped. The game stopped, the chatter stopped, and everything stopped. I feel very sad because this village is very precious to me. I love listening to their gossip and I enjoy their laugh. So I thought about what to do. Slowly all the people in the village moved a bit because they had to search for food. So they went to nearby villages and started looking for food. So I thought, what can I do? I have to save this village. I have to do something. And I have to look for food myself also. So I live in this old big tree and I start going with my nose. <laughs> All over the tree. And what do I find? Beautiful, lovely insects. Which is just resting inside this old tree. I don't know for how many years they've been sleeping inside. So I make them all up and say, Oh, look at what has happened to our village. All the people are gone. All the children are gone. We must do something. So I tell all the insects, why don't we do this? You all go fly all around and bring pollen from everywhere that you can come, that you can gather from. So all the insects flew away, they were only too happy because they also wanted to bring the chatter back. So they flew all over and brought pollen from the beautiful flowers all over the world. And they came back home and there were these flowers which were almost dying in my village. And they came and showered this pollen on these flowers. The flowers felt something, some life within them. And they said, oh, my God, such a beautiful rain of pollen. And they started sucking what little water they could from the ground. And they decided to bloom. So they started blooming. They became red, yellow, purple flowers, beautiful flowers, yellow flowers. And the sky started looking at this. And it wondered, oh my God, there's a famine in this village. And still flowers are blooming. This is something wonderful. What is happening to this village? And so the sky called the clouds from all over the mountains. And it said, clouds, clouds, come here and see what's happening here. What are you doing there? You should be raining here. And so mm -hmm. the clouds come. And then they see this and they shake in with joy. And then they shake themselves all mm -hmm. the water from the clouds fall. And the water falls in the mud. Over the flowers, over the trees and everything. Ah, it's such a beautiful feeling. Everything starts feeling the wetness again. The water seeps through the mud. Mm. The wet mud feels so nice. And have you smelled the mm. wetness yeah. of the leaves? It's beautiful. Then it rains. So all the mud, the granules, the sand, the stones, everything starts feeling the water. And now this place is green again. It's so beautiful. Yeah? 
And slowly everybody hears about this wonder. The bells are full again, the rivers are gushing, the water is flowing, the grass is growing. And the village people hear about this wonderful thing and they all move back to their village. And the laughter is back, the chatter is back, everything is back. They're all joyful again. So now I've decided I'm never going to stop picking and never let the insects sleep. <laughs> Beaver. Beaver is the animal I chose. Okay. It's a whole shade like this. I try to talk when I can't. So I'm going to do without any props or anything. <coughs> so, this started, it was one evening. You know, and a very unique evening, not a regular evening. See, you know how it happens sometimes a muggy day and then finally it rains in the afternoon. Heavy downpour and then everything gets cleared out. And then bright, like, it's like washed. The whole, the air is washed, the trees are washed, the road is washed. <laughs> you know, like not Bangalore, but other places. <laughs> Everything's washed and clear and it's like a crisp evening, right? Most evenings, what do you hear around the lake? You hear these animals kind of going back home, birds flying back to their nest, animals drinking water, going back home. But beavers, evenings for them are mornings. They wake up in the evenings. So eager beaver wakes up around 5.36, stretches himself, comes out of his burrow and goes, oh, Nice day! <laughs> Comes over to the side of the lake. It's like, okay, let's freshen up. Watch this face. Eega beaver, eega beaver! <coughs> what? He has a sound. Eega beaver, eega beaver! He's like, oh, who's that? Eega beaver, eega beaver! Looks up at the lake and he sees two little fish. Eega beaver, eega beaver! <laughs> Hello, fish! What's going on? He's like, beaver, can you help us? Now, eega beaver was known throughout the forest for being this very helpful guy. Anybody wanted anything, they could go to him, they could ask him and he'd help out the best he could. So he says, sure, what do you want me to do? Well, there's this little log that's stuck across the stream and we aren't able to go home. We can't jump like the salmon do. Can you help us? Can you push that log out of our way so we can get home now? Sure. He jumps into the lake, swims across, pushes the log with his shoulder, makes way for the fish, and they all go back. But before they leave, they're like, thank you, beaver. And he's like, you're welcome. And the fish tells him, you know what I saw upstream today? I saw this big, lovely, luscious bunch of berries. So if you want to go get a crack at it before anybody else gets there, you should follow that path and kind of go up the river there and you'll find some luscious berries. So thank you. And after he washes his face, he swims upstream, finds those berries, picks them up, and he's eating those berries. And at which point somebody goes, we go bivu. Huh? Oh yeah. We go bivu. Oh Mr. Owl, it's you. <coughs> yes, we go bivu. It's me. Could you do me a favor? Sure. What can I do for you? You see, I have to go. I'm really, really late. You know, rush hour is really bad in the sky. I have to go hunting. I, I need you to take a message for me to Mr. Eagle across the lake. Okay, what do you want me to tell him? I'll tell him I'm not going to be able to make it tomorrow morning for the meeting. I just can't do it. It's too much happening. Okay. So he, he stashes his berries inside, swims across the lake, you know, lumbers across to the big tree that the eagle nests on and says, Mr. Eagle, you, Mr. Eagle. So Mr. Eagle looks down. He goes, yes, eagle beaver, what is it? So says, well, Mr. Eagle, Mr. Owl said he can't come because he has meetings and he can't make it for this thing. So you know what? He asked me to pass this message on to you. All right. Well, that's good to know because you know what? I can take my little ones out for a little ride. I don't have to keep waiting for a Mr. Owl. Thank you for letting me know. And you know something? As a favor I'm going to tell you, I saw these lovely spruce and pine trees up on the other side. You can use those logs, you can make up, you can build up your lodge a little bit because I see that it's leaking on that side and when the rains come, it's going to be a flood if you're not careful. So he says, thank you, sir. Comes back home and he says, mom, dad, you know what? I think this part of the lodge is getting a little weak, so we need to work tonight. So they're like, okay. So all four of them, there's mom, mama beaver, daddy beaver, Leela beaver and eager beaver. <laughs> so they all go upstream and all like bite, 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 bite with their teeth. Sell some logs, some bark, some birch, mix it with mud, come back home, build up the dam, work all night, and then he gets the stash. Gets all of his yummy berries, and the family shares it. Lovely, contented night. 
it's going to be early morning. So Mama Beaver and Daddy Beaver give them a hug. Go back into the burrow. And Leela and Igor are sitting waiting for sunrise. They want to see the sunrise before they go to bed. They were sitting by the side of the lake. And Leela goes, Igor, don't you feel good? I mean, you helped out the fish. They gave you those berries. You helped out Mr. Eagle. He told you where those pines are. Everybody likes you. I mean, you know, doesn't make you, make you feel really good. And he goes, you know something, Leela? What makes me feel really, really good is when they say thank you. You know how when we finished up today and Mama gave me that big hug? That's how I feel when people say thank you to me. I feel hugged. And she's like, oh, is that why you help out big people? He says, yes, because I really, really could use a big hug every day. And that's the end of my <laughs> <laughs> Okay, today my story is going to be about the webmaster. The webmaster. The spideys. These two. They love a spidey. His name was Archie. Now he was living with his granny. His granny's name was Volga. This guy is a very fun loving guy. He wanted to see color everywhere. So what happens is, the place where they are living. This is well before the web technology, you know. These guys are so bold. It's the stone age of the spiders. So where they are living is in a forest under the tree trunks. <coughs> so early in the morning when they wake up, they see huge tree trunks, huge trees and, and tree trunks. Then they go about in the afternoon. All they see is tree trunks, tree trunks, tree trunks, and tree trunks. Hmm. Okay, at least in the evening it'll be better. So this guy goes on. Even in the evening, it's tree trunks, tree trunks, tree trunks, tree trunks everywhere. This guy is really bored. Why in this whole world can't there be anything more than the tree trunks? Is there only tree trunks in the world? <laughs> Can there be only brown color? Can't there be... White, pink, purple, blue. He goes and tells Volga. Come on, Volga. It can't be like this. How can there be only one color? Why can't we switch homes? I mean, why can't we shift?